Well, Christmas has been what's happening between now and into the future with Layla Central. guys, welcome back to Layla Central. My name's Clinton, I'm your average modeler, and I welcome you to obviously a video that I haven't been posting for quite some time. Uh, I've been very busy obviously with life and work. Um, for those that have been following the channel, as you may be aware, I've been landscaping my backyard at the moment, and uh, obviously it is summer here as well, so time getting into the shed has been very little. Um, and of course, preparations for Christmas, it's been busy, everything has been, it's been pretty chaotic. The other thing is also there are some big changes happening to this layout which I'm going to run through and explain uh, to you guys as well. Now if you're new to the channel as well, thanks for joining me, thanks for subscribing uh, and of course if you're watching the channel for the first time don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below and follow my progress, especially with what's coming up. So a few things that we've been, uh, well those that have been following the channel for quite some time do know that I've changed this layout quite a few times. Um, I think by memory, this is probably the third rebuild that I've actually done. Now, why does that actually occur? Well, some of it's circumstances, some of it's ideas in my head, but a majority of it is in relation to me just on the quest of perfection, which sounds a little bit bizarre, but it's one of these things where once I build a layout, I run it for some time, have a good play with it, I then discover what I don't like about it and obviously what I like about it. And in the past, I tear the layout down, rebuild it again to address the things that I didn't like previously about the last one in the quest of creating something that I'm completely 100% happy with. And of course, as Murphy <laughs> Murphy's Law, I'm back to that stage again and I'll run through some of the issues on uh, or what I don't like about the layout and what's actually causing me to go to where from here but also what the plan is. Um, now, I'll be quite frank, I'm sick to death of this endless circle where, you know, I build a layout, get to a point where I'm running things and everything else, start some stuff, and then I decide to restart it again. It's driving me nuts. Um, and as you can imagine, I'm in this endless circle pretty much. Um, but the reason I document and I share is to show that, you know, some of us keep redoing things when we're not happy, um, me especially. Um, and Am I happy with that? Yes, I am. But there's things that annoy me and I want to address them. Um, and the only way I can address them is by making some changes uh, to this. So anyway, we'll get to some of the areas of the layouts and I'll go through and explain what I don't like and what's going to happen. Okay, so what you're looking at here, apart from my mess that's on the floor, is the entry to my layout. So I've got my, as you can see over the distance, there's my door to my shed to come in here. Then I come to a duck under under the layout here. Now the, the layout width, particularly the boards across here, are around about um, two foot wide. So they're nothing extravagant, um, but you know, large enough for put scenery and get some things in there. And the duck under, I mean, to begin with, I didn't think it was going to be too much of a bother, but as I keep coming in and out, in and out of here, it's now driving me nuts. Doesn't help the fact that I've been bumping my head as well. I am a tall person. I'm over six foot tall. I keep banging my head on this thing and it really annoys me. So one of the things I'm going to do is get rid of this duck under. It's going to be a lift out section. That's the first thing. As we continue around to what is my fiddle yard. Now, this fiddle yard area here, I'm happy with it. I'm glad I've got a fiddle yard. I do enjoy it. However, it frustrates me because of it's a little bit awkward and doesn't make use of the space. And while I am happy I've got a fill yard, I'm not happy with how it is. Now, to put it in an example, I've got three lines that come into the fiddle yard itself. One for you know the two main expresses plus the slow goods. But then over the other side over further, as we quickly wander over, it goes to four lines. So we've got a little bit of complexity of you know, how many lines go in one end and how many go out the other. The other thing is also, it goes on a bend. I've got also other obstacles such as this beam here sticking out a bit. So as a result, I've compromised, I've put a fiddle yard in, but it's not maximizing the space. And the other thing is also, I, I really prefer just simple straight fiddle yards with none of this, you know, curved turnouts and all that sort of stuff. Um, same with going over to here where I've got some turnouts and bits and pieces. 
yeah, the fiddle yard works good, but I'm not happy with it. It does annoy me. Um, and that's one, that's another aspect of that, essentially. Okay, now another aspect of the layout itself that really annoys me, which was only more of a recent uh, sort of discovery and was kind of one of the, you know, straws that broke the camel's back and it was in relation to my lighting that I put up. Now, for those that seen the video previously, yep, yeah, I whacked in a couple of batten lights up here, still haven't run the lead across and everything. Um, and that was because, you know, as soon as I put these lights in, got the lead across, I'm looking at it and it started to really aggravate me. Um, the lighting, that's a good way to compensate for some areas. As you can see the darkness here, you can see the, shirt, the light going from here over to shadow. So these do serve a very good uh, job. However, you know, I didn't consider lighting when I put this in, uh, or this layout, I should say. And while there's some things I can do, I could potentially put some things out here and extend it over, it's... To me, it's it's starting to not make compromises, but start to get to the point where I'm putting things in as an afterthought, and it's annoying me. Um, so they're not getting done how I want. There's a few things there that annoy me with that, and of course, as you can see with you know all the stuff on the bench area here, I've got plenty of space underneath the layer to put stuff, but I don't have any storage under this, so it always ends up on top here. Um, you know, and the idea of having maybe some shelves across the top here would be fantastic. Um, as well so that could be a potential thing but you know the lighting uh, was something I did not consider until later on which then started to aggravate me even further um, and get me some annoyance in that regard. The other thing uh, in relation to the light now to be honest I've got quite a good generous space here uh, I do enjoy the space that I've got to run my trains it's a good length uh, for those that aren't aware uh, basically my shed from corner to corner over further is uh, about 6 metres or 5.8 metres uh, same with going this direction from here back to the corner behind me so when you think about it I've got almost the equivalent distance of uh, 22, 24 metres worth of running of track including the fiddle yard um, so the train itself you know comes from the fiddle yard goes down through uh, Shilton station goes around a nice generous curve here goes around to Brinklow over to further to where I've got my uh, bridge which is just over there so it's uh, it's a good run um, however I don't make, make complete use of the space now the other thing is I mean with some railroaders especially myself I'm always on the quest to try and make the train look like it's going somewhere now that can be quite difficult if you've got a small space or depending on how you model. If you're me, for example, you know, oh, that's probably my biggest challenge. I want to feel like it's going somewhere um, as well. And while I feel it does go somewhere, the station of Brinklow right here, to me, is way too close to Shilton over here. And while that's, to, you know, to some people that's not a problem, to me that's annoying. There's no distance or real distance between the station here and station here. To me, it needs to go a bit more further before it gets there. I may have been better off moving essentially Brinklow from here over to the other side of the wall over further. Um, but not too sure, but that's one aspect. The other thing that I did, and I did it not out of haste, but out of convenience, but of course I've regretted it, is, you know, these are flat baseboards that I've actually put in you know I've put in some very strong uh, timber work here um, which you know is probably over engineered but it's super strong I can sit on it without any issues it is strong and, you know, and I've got a flat top over it so when you have a look at this of course yeah I can put in some scenery stuff on top here and over further it's all flat um, you know, I don't have the ability or the option to put in a bridge underneath I mean I could if I cut this out but then other parts may need reinforcing particularly on this actual board itself it is only chipboard um how i've done it is perfectly fine but as soon as i start making gouges out of it or cut things out you know to put in a bridge or a river underneath or whatever then i need to start reinforcing it so it doesn't sag in some other areas so that's the other aspect as well the scenery parts playing on me a bit and while some parts are looking good particularly the bridge over further with the hills that i've been doing the i think you know i should have just done it it was going to take longer to do but i think i would have been happier long term particularly when the scenery gets in and how it would have looked so you know there's this bit of a change uh, or thing that annoys me as well so there you have it there's just some of the items that really annoy me now overall you know the lead is quite good i am 
I do enjoy the lat, you know, I've got some wonderful curves, there's some great sweeping uh, lines here, great photo opportunity uh, things as well. The other thing I forgot to mention was I I never had intentions of running three main lines. Uh, I always wanted two. Um, one just for more scenery. So as a result, as a result of me putting in three lines, I've expanded the bench work in some areas to put that extra scenery in as well. So it encroached a bit on some areas. But you know, overall it's a good layout. It, it's good, it does have its issues, which to me, unless I address them, it's gonna annoy me like you know a thorn in your thumb. Um, so unfortunately, yes, believe it or not, I'm taking this down yet again. Um, but I've got some, I'm actually pretty excited about what I've actually been planning and working on. And I think you guys may or would or will agree also, once you take a look at what I've been working on, um, you'll probably see, you know what, my future plan is gonna be so, so much more better. Um, and it's, you know, addressing these issues that I've seen but or come across, but also some of the things that I've come across in the past with my previous layouts, which I didn't like or annoy. So the layout do, does get better and evolves to be better each time. I'm just hoping this would be the, the last and final time I pull this down and redo it again. Um, because like I mentioned, it's driving me nuts. I'm sick to death of redoing this again and again. But I know if I don't do it, long term wise, it's going to really start to irritate me, particularly the duck under, um, you know, the fiddle yard and definitely the lighting as well. So yeah, let's take a look at the plans and what I'm working on. OK, so here we are. Uh, essentially, my sketches now, I do apologise if it's struggling to focus because of the uh, the graph paper I've been drawing on here. Um, now, I've just lifted the tripod up a little bit just so I can focus a little bit more on uh, these plans right here. So, to put it in short, or well, not short, but here's the outline on my shed. So, six metres going from here down to this corner here, and of course, six metres going from here over to this corner right here. Here's the doorway entry into my shed, as mentioned right here, and... Still following off what I enjoy, the train runs around the entire outline of the shed. So we've got, again, two feet boards going right across here, going around the other side, over to here, back around. Now, there is going to be a back scene running across here, as you can see with this dotted line kind of effect. So the line itself will go across here, back around. Now, this pe uh, peninsula right here, I've sort of drawn and sketched to the diameter of at least 30 inches. <clears throat> uh, so this will just go around like so, back around here, back along the other side of the back scene, back along here, back on the loop, back around here, and then a back to where we actually started. So we've got our entry right here. There's going to be a fiddle yard right here as well. Um, now this is going to be dead straight. I'm going to have the fiddle yard entry starting about here somewhere. It opens up into its lines and then convenes back into these areas here. The other thing that you don't see right here is this will be a double decker layout. I'm creating a multi deck layout. So I will go through those sections with you and uh, explain to you what we're actually doing. Okay, so as mentioned, now I'll just quickly zoom that camera out a little bit just so I get these plans in focus. There we go, beautiful. So as mentioned, here's the entry into what is the shed. I've got a window over this area here. So as mentioned, the boards are on the outside of the actual layout itself, so they're going to be two feet wide or about 60 centimetres uh, in width going across here. Same down here, back around, across the peninsula, around here, nice big curve around here, then back around. So, and mentioned double decked layout. So why are we doing a double deck layout? Well, for two reasons. I like my branch line trains. I like my single track sort of trains that go somewhere, hence why I've got uh, my cement plant, for example. Um, but I also like my main expresses. Now, the only way I can really run both of them in a nice sort of layout is to have two. And what better way to do it than a double deck layout? So here's the initial floor plan on what will actually be. But I've done some plans over the next couple of pages so you can actually see what the track plan looks like. And here we are. Now, these are these stations that I'm doing, as people know me uh, from following the channel, I do like to do things to scale. 
uh, particularly the stations themselves if they once existed. Um, now, whether I actually model the stations, like scratch build them as they once were, is the part that well, I can't answer at this stage. I don't know if I'm if I'm going to do that. I may substitute it with some uh, alternative buildings. But um, so anyway, let's get to it. So this is the bottom layer itself, or what I would actually, oh sorry, the top level. Uh, now this top level is what I would call the branch line. So it's a single track going around into some various stations. So we've got our lengthy fiddle yard right here. So the equivalent of this is one to about three meters in length for branch line trains. Now that may be shortened up so I can put a bit of scenery in as well. We'll wait and see. But anyway, the fiddle yard is here. It's gonna be nice and straight. The section here around the door is gonna be a lift out section. So this will lift out, it might swing up, it might swing in, not sure, but it's gonna be somewhere where I don't have to duck under to get in there. As it goes across, it comes over to here. Now, these are stations that used to exist along the Somerset and Dorset uh, branch line. Now, this area here is essentially what the stations are modeled on, going from Evercreech Junction all the way to um, Burnham on Sea. So there's a couple of stations in here. I've picked them out one because they can fit in here and they're in order and maybe a bit of operational interest. So anyway, comes around from the fiddle yard and the scene will probably start across here. So coming across here, goes out into two lines here. Now what I might do just so you guys can see a bit better is I'll zoom in for you. Okay, that makes it a bit, a bit better. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, so it goes off into two lines here. Now this is an overpass here for an actual bridge and then we come into the station of pile. So as you can see, in these areas here, sorry, it's a bit stiff. I'll just uh, undo my tripod a little bit so it moves a little bit freely. Here we go. All right, so here's pile right here. There's the station, the platform, two tracks going through the station itself with a couple of turnouts for the good yards. Now, this is an interesting aspect of the station itself. The good shed, which is this box right here, backs onto what was the station master's house. So the station master's house was incorporated into the good shed somewhat, uh, which, which is a bit unique, a bit different. Um, so yeah, but otherwise, you know, it continues along, has a very long hedge shunt right here, which if I uh, move my camera up a little bit, as you can see here, so it goes quite a fair length, this hedge shunt. Um, but otherwise, you know, we've got our double line and then it comes back into the one line here, which then curls around, back down through here, curls around, back over to here. Now this is essentially a small hole called Ashcott. Um, and all it really is is just a simple little hold. It's not even a brick uh, platform per se. It's a bit of a concrete thing risen up on the ground. A bit unique. Uh, we'll look at that much later on, of course. And it just has a simple little uh, goods drop off line. So nothing special, just a simple station and a little uh, siding. So it continues around, goes around the peninsula. Now you have to excuse my curves. I'm terrible at freehanding curves and I couldn't find the right object to trace around such as a mug or a, uh, a cylinder of some sort to get the you know the curve of it right. So please excuse that. So otherwise it curls around, goes around here, back down here and around. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of scenery going on here. You know, just going from here, it's got to go a fair bit of distance just to get that illusion that the train's going somewhere. So again, we curl around here and then it comes into the station called Basin Bridge. Now Basin Bridge itself had a uh, milk industry, uh, which is around this area right here. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, you know, it comes out here into double track, goes off into some sidings as well, one for the cattle dock and the milk depot. We do have another overpass right here. Uh, uh, the line continues right through, which is then you've got the Basin Bridge Station, which is right here. So it continues along, and then we go back to our actual fiddle yard. So that there alone, guys, is what I would call the branch line. So a single track actually going somewhere. Um, and to me, that, it does achieve it. Uh, we are, we've got our, we're achieving our lift out section here. We're not needing to duck under. We've got our fiddle yard right here. Um, you know, and you know, okay, we've got a station right here, goes around, you know, a bit of distance. So we've got some scenery, we've got some elements to make the train look like it's traveling somewhere before it gets to the next station at Ashcott. Continues on with more scenery and then gets the basin bridge and then back to the fiddle yard itself. 
Now, being a double deck layout as well, lighting, the, the, the same dimensions will exist for the next layer up, uh, below, um, but there's going to be lighting directly above this with the same dimensions of this bench work itself. Um, so if I wanted to put a third layout on top, I can, but the purpose of the, the next layer on top of this, which is the same dimensions, minus the track plan, obviously, one sole can put, attach lights underneath it to shine down onto the layout itself, but then I've got storage above here. So no storage is gonna occur on the layout itself. It's occurring below or above, not on the layout itself. That is the absolute goal. The other thing is also all the track, all the bench work here is gonna be all open grid and it's gonna be elevated as well. So I can get my bridges in uh, going underneath. I can get my, my streams, rivers, canals, whatever I want uh, based on what's here. Now, when it comes to Ashcott and you know a bit more further on, it does follow the line of an actual um, uh, I can't think of it now. I just lost it. I just said it just before. But um, essentially, uh, you know, it follows a river uh, right along a canal. That's what I'm looking for. So, you know, there's probably going to be a canal following along here, but the track is going to be sitting above, you know, probably about, oh, maybe about, I don't know. I'll have to look at that, of course. But, you know, it'll sit above so I can do all sorts of stuff. So this is the top track plan. This is the branch line itself. Now, if we go to the next layer below this, so this is uh, the next layer uh, below. This is the main express uh, track plan itself. Uh, so same sort of principle. It still goes around the outside, back around here, around the peninsula, back through, and then back over to here to the fiddle yard itself. So the fiddle yard, again, is quite lengthy. It's straight. There's none of this curve business and it's gonna be simple. And again, there's gonna be a, a lift out section on here, so I don't have to duck under, I just walk straight in here. Uh, so let's zoom in on it and uh, go through it. Now again as well, this does still follow the lines of uh, stations that uh, sometimes actually still exist as well from uh, heritage groups, but uh, again, still on the Somerset and Dorset Railway. So first things first, comes out of the fiddle yard, goes around this curve here and then comes into the station called Midsummer Norton. Now, this has been restored by some uh, good enthusiasts and uh, heritage groups, um, but essentially it's just two tracks coming in. We do have a spur coming off here, going into the goods yard right here. Nothing extravagant, nice and simple. The track is elevated above the roadway, as you can see here. So this road does go underneath the actual uh, lines themselves. So apart from that, continues along through here goes around the outside here, you know, nice big run over to here as well. You have to excuse my camera work here, guys. I'm trying to keep it still. Still curls around, double track the peninsula, back around here, and then comes into the station called Masbury. Um, now, I may be pronouncing it incorrectly, but I do believe it is Masbury. And again, it's just two lines going through the main uh, station here. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so two main lines going through here. We do have a small little spur coming off to the side here. Um, and of course, you know, a couple of sidings right here. Nothing extravagant. So again, the tra two trains themselves, whoops, go around through here. And now I'm actually gonna be modeling their approach to the Windsor Hill uh, tunnel entrance and the exit to scale. Now the tunnel, whoops, sorry, the tunnels themselves won't be to scale, but the approaches will be. So this is the entrance right here. So the, the distance to go, you know, from where it goes from two tracks deviates off, etc. I've actually modeled the distance between these uh, or will be. So comes into here. Now will be a sharp curve, which will be under the tunnel, which you won't see itself. And again, these will come out of the actual tunnels uh, right here as well. And again, just to illustrate the distance uh, in, in real scale as well, you know, the distance between these two, convening back up over to here and then back around to the actual fiddle yard itself. Now you're gonna, you can probably see these dotted lines right here at the moment. Now that is in response to the fact I've got my corn disc I need to store here. This will be sitting directly above it. And this is just to indicate to me how far it's gonna sit out from the bench work when it's in place. So think of the desk, then you've got your first layer of bench work above that. Um, so I can still do my work and bits and pieces on here, but this, bit of the line here I may actually take out just for ease of access um, because of this desk that sits out. I can, as you can see here, I can potentially leave it and not worry about it, but I am looking at cutting that out. So it'll just be a nice straight cut across here just to give a bit more room to move through.
So, and again, of course, because we've got a deck uh, directly above this, there's lighting on those layers, shining to the layers below. Um, and that is the actual plan on what I'm going to do with my layout. Um, now, you know, I don't take this, uh, I don't take this uh, simply, you know, it's uh, it's not a quick choice for me to actually do, especially undertaking, not just uh, taking this light down, but undertaking, let's face it, quite a big, big uh, undertaking, you know, double deck layout and going right through the whole shed. I'm maximizing the entire space now. Um, and it's the only way I think I can actually get happy. Um, so. The order on how I build this as well is going to differ than in the past. I will be, of course, I've got to put in some false uh, walls. So I've got to put in some stud walls going across here and here just to support this bench work itself. So I've got some stud walls I need to actually build. Then I've got to build the open uh, plan bench work as well. So a big frame right around the whole lot, two levels of that. Then once that's actually done, I'm getting my lighting in. So the layers, the bench work above, each one, etc. It's going to have its lighting in before I've even put in any track. Um, layers in between there. And then once that's done, I'm putting my back scenes in and then I'm going to start painting them again before I've put in any of the track work itself. So we're probably going to be some time before we see any trains running again. Uh, my first plan will be obviously apart from dismantling will be to build and get trains running on the branch line itself. That's the first thing I want to get uh, running. Um, so by the time I've put my bench work in, I've put my lighting in and I've painted my back scenes in here, um, the, the track work will go on, which will be again, Ray sort of track as well. So I can, as mentioned, get me uh, modeling stuff below the track line as well. Um, and then once the track works in here, then I'll progress to the next stage as well. And very similar to, I guess, some of the American railroads that you see in people's homes. There's gonna be some nice fascias and everything right around the entire lot of this, um, just to give it that nice look, both on the layers above and below. Some areas, particularly like this here, uh, while I have track going through into here, you know, there's not going to be any scenery here. The scenery is going to be cut off right across here and then it will begin. Uh, same with the other side here as well. So there's things I'm going to be doing. Uh, one, to make it look really nice. So the idea is I'm going to have bench work, lighting and um, back scenes painted in, in before I lay the track work and it should look quite good. That's the idea anyway. And so... Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, obviously, you know, double deck layouts. Now, I did look at putting a helix in, um, but I like to run steam trains. Steam trains are notoriously difficult to get up helixes, particularly if you add extra weight behind them, such as pulling carriages. The chances of them not getting up their layers uh, of the levels may not have worked, or the helix itself I was looking at was gonna be, you know, over 2.3 meters. Uh, two and a half meters wide, which is you now going out to here. That's you know that's a massive chunk right here taken out of my out of my space just for a helix. Another reason why each one of these levels is completely independent of the other. Um, well, they're both modelled on the on the my one railway line and area. Um, they are going to be completely independent and separate layouts. Um, like I mentioned, that way I can get my branch line trains running to, to an area in a way that I'm going to be happy. But also, you know, I can still get my main express trains running through without any problems and, you know, getting the best of both worlds. Um, so there you have it. So there we go. That's the plan uh, going into this uh, 2020. So we're gonna start uh, taking this down. Still got landscaping and stuff to do in my backyard, of course, but I'm gonna start taking this down. I'm gonna be uh, redoing the track. Um, now the track itself is code 100 on this. I will be taking it out and I've already worked out. I'm gonna be using all the track that I've got on the layer currently in the footle yards alone. Um, that's a fair lot of track in the fiddle yards. Um, so we'll be making the uh, change going from code 100 to code 75. Um, the code 75 track, I really want to go the ball head track, particularly on the branch line. However, I have been looking at the costs and I may not go to it because it's just gonna be quite expensive. Um, having said that though, I am thinking, well, it might be expensive long-term, but let's make it gradual. So there is a chance I may be using bullhead track over the entire layer. Um, the, obviously there's no, uh, the turnout range and the crossovers are not ex uh, extensive out there with bullhead track, uh, particularly with the Pico. Um, 
but we'll wait and see. Uh, but definitely going to code 75, making the change from code 100. Um, and like I mentioned, none of this track is going to waste that's currently here of code 100. It's all going into what will be the fiddle yard um, as well for both layers. Um, now, I did some mass working on the actual rounds of the actual bench work itself. And there's the equivalent of, so from the train going from the fiddle yard back into the fiddle yard is the equivalent of around about 42 metres um, of running length. Now, I tried to convert it into 00 scale and it's almost the equivalent of the train running in two miles in scale, um, which, oh, that's, that's a bit different. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see how that uh, how that gets on. So unfortunately, uh, you know, to some of you guys out there that have been looking forward to running, seeing trains run and everything else, plus the scenery, just as I am, um, you know, we're hitting that reset button yet again. Um, not something I want to be doing anymore. I, uh, this drove me nuts as I was redoing this, let alone going to the extent that I will be. However, I do believe though, making these changes and going to a double deck layout with lights above each of the lines themselves, it's gonna look so, so much better. Um, something I think it needs to be done. Um, so yeah, but otherwise guys, uh, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Um, you know, got some wonderful purchases as well. Um, I don't have any monthly mailbox uh, to share with you guys because I didn't get anything. Um, but um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts, leave your comments down below. Um, obviously subscribe if you wanna see this uh, project get produced and start uh, becoming underway. Um, there are a lot of things like furniture such as this. This has got to be removed out as well. Um, I've got a lot of changes I've got to make in here. Um, but once done and underway, I think it's going to be very, very well. Um, and we'll look the part. Um, you know, you step in here and it's almost going to be like an exhibition. Um, or, you know, everything's on for show. That's what I want. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you are well, and uh, thanks for sticking around. Talk to you soon. Bye.